Hello everyone and welcome to another really awesome game from round 7 of the 2021 Singfield Cup. It's Shakhtar Mamedyarov versus Fabiano Caruana. Uh, it's a very interesting game and uh, here Mamedyarov tries an opening that Fabi already had with the white pieces but uh, there's a little bit of a twist to the game. So without further ado let's check it out and see uh, how the game went. So Mamedyarov with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Fabi, uh, c4, e6, uh, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. That's not a bishop. We have the Nimzovich, uh, the, the Nimzo Indian defense, and now f3, the Khmer variation. Uh, white ready to grab the full center with e4. We have c5 striking in the center here, and d5 advancing that pawn uh, while getting ready to push that e4 pawn. So d6 by Fabi, and e4 now. And now... Uh, usually uh, black will just castle here, that's the m mostly played move here, but b5 is getting uh, a lot of attention and this is now becoming more and more popular. Uh, point is, if you capture on b5, then you no longer defend the d5 pawn with your c pawn, so black can simply open up the center, the knight can't move, and if captures, you're gonna castle, and, uh, well, your king is still in the center of the board, could be a little bit dangerous. So instead, after b5, we have bishop to d2, now the knight can move, and here Fabi just uh, removes it from the board. The bishop captures, we have bishop captures, and now b4. Uh, grabbing more space on the queen side, attacking this dark square bishop, bishop back to d2, and now Fabi castles. And Mamidyarov goes for knight e knight to e2. And now we mentioned that um, there is a game that Fabi played, and he played it uh, in 2020, almost, uh, yeah, uh, in 2020 in, in Norway chess, he played against Levon Aronian, uh, and uh, in this position, knight to h5 was played by Levon, uh, and he was able to win that game. But here, uh, we have e captures on d5, and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So Fabi deviates from uh, his game uh, against Levon. Uh, we have e captures on d5, and now knight to h5. Uh, so here the white king is still in the center of the board and uh, Mamedyarov uh, tackles this by playing king to f2. Later on you're going to play knight to f4, hopefully trade off uh, the, the, the pair of knights, get the bishop into the game and then maybe play rook to e1 and you will have finished development. So f5, Fabi with some ideas of maybe even playing f4, if that pawn comes to f4 then white will have a very hard time developing. So uh, knight to f4 and uh, Fabi trades We have knight captures bishop captures and now g5 and now the problem is this bishop does not have all that many squares of course you can't go here uh, we're just going to trap it with f4 and uh, the this pawn chain here is really making it uh, a problem for this bishop to be of any use so bishop back to c1 yeah uh, you could also play bishop to d2 but it's still not a uh, uh, not, not a great piece, uh, probably bishop to c1, then he wants to play b3, and then bishop to b2, and here it's going to be a great piece, that's why uh, playing the seemingly more inactive move instead of bishop to d2, but okay, bishop to c1, uh, and now uh, you could grab even more space with uh, with f4, but Fabi simply continues developing, knight to d7, uh, and now f4, Mamedyarov doesn't want to allow Fabi to push f4 himself, we have knight to f6, and now king to g1, so getting the king to a bit of a safer square but it's um I mean, uh, Mamedyarov is up material, but his rook is stuck on h1. And until he can get that rook into the game, it's going to be very hard for him to play this. So knight to e4 by Fabi. Uh, and now Mamedyarov would be very happy to trade off some material. F captures and g5. He definitely wouldn't mind knight captures. Uh, and then, uh, let's say, bishop captures. But uh, Fabi just continues with f4. Uh, so he gives up uh, a little bit of material. Uh, further, uh, to uh, start an attack on Mamedyarov's king, we have bishop to d3. Now that the pawn moved, this bishop can grab more space here. The knight is attacked. We have queen to e7 defending the knight and queen to e2 attacking the knight twice. Uh, bishop to f5. Fabi develops uh, by defending the knight here and now bishop captures an f4. The, uh, by developing the bishop here, the rook is no longer guarding the f4 pawn. So bishop captures an f4 and now comes queen to g7. And it's a, it's a really tricky position uh, because uh, white is up two pawns, but uh, white still has to get his rook into the game. And here it's a question, how do you continue playing this? Uh, the thing is, you could go for bishop captures on e4, and this seems to be the, the best idea. The problem is, after bishop captures, you can't capture here. You have to go bishop back to g3, and then it's a really, really 
uh, weird position where white should be better, but your rook is still on h1. If you can somehow properly get this rook into the game, then you will be better. The problem is if you capture the bishop here, then you get rook a to e8, and now these rooks are just monsters. Your queen to f3, you have to keep an eye on your bishop, just queen to d4 check, and you're going to win back your piece. So it's uh, not a problem. Uh, so he doesn't like that, uh, going uh, straight for bishop captures on e4. So he plays rook to f1, uh, but now we have bishop to g6. Uh, we have h3 now, uh, making some room along the, those dark, dark squares for the bishop, but also maybe at some point, maybe king to h2 can be played. We have rook a to e8, and now queen back to c2. Uh, you want to move the queen away from the, the rook on the e-file, so queen to c2, and now queen to d4 with check. We have king to h2, and now rook to f7. Fabi with some ideas of doubling up on uh, the e or the f-file, all depending on what white plays. Uh, and here we have queen to e2. And this is uh, another moment where you have to thread very carefully. Uh, you could go for bishop captures on e4. And after bishop captures on e e4, queen to e2. You pin the bishop as the rook here is undefended. And now let's say black offers a queen trade. We're going to trade here, play rook f2. And now white can finally get his rook into the game. And uh, well, uh, he should be able to to uh, just continue playing this game. Uh, but Mamedyarov decided to play queen to e2. Yes, the knight is still pinned. The rook... Uh, I would be hanging on e8, but now uh, there is one move that Fabi can play, and that is knight to f6. Now the knight covers the rook, the rook attacks the queen, and you have to move the queen. And here Mamedyarov moves it to d1, although this is uh, hardly the best square for the queen. The best square is queen to f2, but this is a very complicated line, uh, which I will show uh, just for your viewing pleasure. So queen to f2 is what should have been played, and now we get the, the following tricky line. Bishop captures on d3. Uh, G captures on f6, and now bishop captures on f1. Grabbing that rook, now comes queen to g3 with check. Uh, you can't go to f8 because bishop to h6 just wins the game. So king to h8, and now we're going to play rook captures on f1. And you get this very tricky position where uh, black is up the exchange, but white has this very dangerous pass pawn on f6. And the point is, after queen captures on f6, we have this beautiful bishop to e5 move that allows us to save the game with white. Um, uh, you you can't, of course, uh, move the queen because the king would be in check. And uh, you, you can't really play something like uh, d captures on e5. If you play d captures on e5, uh, then rook captures, uh, rook captures, and now queen to h4, you will be in a lot of... Uh, a lot of trouble here because you will not be able to defend the position. The pass deep on along with the discoordinated rooks will be enough for white to win the game. For example, rook f7, we're going to play queen to h5 now, attack the rooks, and after king to g7 defending, now we can play queen to g5 with check. Let's say king h8 and now d6 and there's not all that much you can play here. Uh, if rook to d7, we're going to play uh, a very nice queen to h5, attack the rook, and now after, let's say, rook to e6, going for a double attack here, uh, queen to f5 just wins. You're either winning this rook or this rook, or if black really wants to win that pawn, uh, well, then we just deliver queen to f8 to checkmate. So there are a lot of ways you can win this. Uh, so point is, after this, queen captures on f6 and bishop to e5, black would have to go for the, uh, well, just for the absolute best rook captures on e5. Uh, give up the queen this this way and now two rooks against the queen we would probably see a draw uh, somewhere along these lines uh, but Mamedyarov doesn't uh, appreciate this queen to f2 idea uh, he plays queen to d1 and now Fabi takes uh, full advantage of this because it's a very similar position uh, but also a very different one bishop captures on d3 uh, and now not of course not queen captures g captures on f6 the knight is hanging there bishop captures on f1 and now queen to g4 with check king to h8 again we cannot go to f8 so king to h8 and now rook captures on f1 and now it's a uh, it's a similar position to the one that we've discussed but now rook captures on f6 uh, this can be played and now there is no bishop to e5 move it simply uh, does not exist so here we have rook to f3 trying to bring that rook into the attack but now fabi just plays uh, rook to g8 puts more pressure on the queen here queen to h4 putting pressure on the rook here on f6 but now just queen captures on b2 threatening checkmate so rook to g3 defending against checkmate and now rook captures on g3 we have bishop captures on g3 and now uh, mamedyarov has this position
position where uh, it's not easy for for black to you know go about this position. Uh, unfortunately, it is. Uh, there's one move that uh, that's completely winning for Fabi. So feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Fabi while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the queen can't really move anywhere from this diagonal as then, well, rook cap uh, queen captures rook would happen. And if the rook moves anywhere from f6, then we will be able to harass the black king. And that's not something you want to do. So to everyone who found it, congratulations. It is, of course, queen to d4. Uh, and now uh, you're still defending everything, you're threatening to pick up the, the white queen and uh, well capturing this is just completely winning for black, there's no point even trying this endgame. So of course uh, Mamedyarov had to avoid this, he played queen to h5 now trying to get some checks in, uh, but now Fabi covers this square. Queen to e4 uh, prevents the, the queen from delivering uh, any checks, we have queen to g5 attacking the rook here, now queen to g6. Fabi simply offers a queen trade because the, the result endgame will be winning for him we have queen back to e3 and now we have queen to f7 so what can you do here we have queen to b3 uh, but now comes rook to g6 and it was in this position on move 38 that Shakhtar Mamidyaro resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here uh, to give you uh, well just a quick example for example if queen b2 check we can simply play queen here we block check and threaten to uh, win the bishop here so the the end game is uh, completely winning we have to try and guard the, the bishop here but now we just play a5 and a few more pawn pushes before we trade everything along the g file and that's it white doesn't really have a useful move for example bishop f4 a4 and now well let's say for the, for the fun of it uh bishop g3 so now we can trade everything off captures captures and captures and now our pass pawn can easily win the game here uh in case you were wondering how this might might go it, it would not be played this way as these gentlemen are much much uh, uh better chess players but they are so good they don't even have to play it out uh, so there we have 38 moves after rook to g6, Mamedyaro resigned, and Fabi almost joins the leaders, but uh, our true leader of the tournament is Maxime Vachier Lagrave. We're not going to show the standings just yet, as uh, I do have this rule where I show at least three games before we check out the standings. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nice um, uh, bounce back by Fabi. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tom Deralo, Balash Tanka, David Kimura, Jay Langdon Consulting, and Joseph Kupreshanin for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the uh, Singfield Cup and uh, whatever else happens uh, in the chess world, along with your wonderful suggestions, of course. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.